Hey cats, today I've got another mysterious episode of the Shoe Files for you. I think I want to believe I'm Ed Fox Mulder Bud with my trusty colleague Beast Scully. On the Shoe Files we delve into those mysterious stories of intrigue and beguilement. Today I'm going to be talking about the lack of midsole stack rules in triathlons. Let's get to it. Welcome back to the channel people, it is always appreciated you tuning in. If you haven't done so yet, help us out by hitting that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. Recently part-time surfer Gustav Eiden set a new course record at the Ironman 70.3 World Championships. He clearly is a master of all trades with a record 2 hours 36.15 in the marathon section in his first, yes, his very first Ironman World Championships. It's quite unbelievable, isn't it? That's like me having a go at the javelin and being extremely good. It's not quite like that, but you get the picture. It's quite stunning and a huge effort. Also huge was the midsole stack of the shoes that he was using. The shoe itself is supposedly an evolved version of the Cloud Boom Echo from On Running. There's certainly a more considerable stack though here in Gustav's shoes. A huge magnitude of cloud tech. So this is obviously On Running's marathon shoe, but they've kind of expanded that out. There don't appear to be those rules to stop anyone from using a shoe like that. And I think this is very much a prototype that they've made for him specifically. There's no stack rules to comply with, thus it's fair game for manufacturers to do that. Over on On Running's website, there was like a little interview with the guy. Very interesting stuff could be gleaned from it too. I'd suggest that the shoe really gave him a boost on downhill sections, perhaps with that compression and plate setup. And he gained these experiences by using the shoes in training beforehand. He was doing some 40 kilometer long runs in the shoes. I think only like the week before or something. Wow. He also suggested that the bigger stack in the shoes lowered the recovery time required after those runs. Just left his legs feeling really good, ready for racing. So that's the end of that story. But it's not, is it? Let's not forget that undertaking a triathlon, certainly with these types of paces, isn't something that everyday people can do. People don't just decide to do this on a whim. This guy has been training and working hard in all the disciplines for a very long time. You're going to have to distribute your training just right. We've only got 24 hours in a day, right? You need more equipment, more time, and maybe a sponsor or two to help you out to afford some of that gear. Is it any coincidence that Nike and Adidas as shoe and apparel manufacturers don't seem all that bothered about marketing their shoes for triathletes. You know, it's Kip and the gang, isn't it, to market those marathon shoes to you from Nike and good old Amos and his crew to market the three-stripe marathon shoes. You might need to buy new vests and shorts and some socks maybe, but certainly a tad cheaper than if you're going to be a triathlete. Nike and Adidas don't sell bikes. They sell a little bit of swimming gear, but not a lot. It's certainly not pushed to the front of our consciousness like some of those other shoes and pieces of footwear. Football, basketball and running are much easy sellers due to the lack of the other gear that you need. If you want to play football, you can just get a couple of jumpers out for goalposts. Basketball, you can just sort of throw a ball at a basket. And running, you can just run. You could run up the stairs if you wanted to. I think Nike and Adidas are actually staying away from sponsoring some of those athletes simply because they know the great majority of people don't do triathlons. Quite a few people do marathons. Or do they? Apparently only 0.05% of people in the United States have reportedly run a marathon, so that makes for about 0.01% of the world's population. If we think about Nike sales up to the early part of 2022, about 66% of total sales were for footwear. Apparel and equipment only make up about 34%. We have to remember as well that none of Nike's top selling shoes are really top line running shoes. In their sales list in terms of revenue, the Air Force One comes out on top, the Revolution 5 a bit lower, the Air Max 97 and the Jordan 1 OGs all make for some of the best selling models. There's no vapor flies in there, Adidas and Nike, it's all shoes, that's their game. That's what they stick with, they know that works. Adidas slightly more balanced with about 53.4% of all sales being shoes, with apparel and gear making up the rest. I think running shoes are a bit of a spit in the ocean really of the profits for some of these big companies. As such they stick to what knows is going to make them cash. I can't see Nike 
making a bicycle anytime soon. They're expensive items, they're costly to design and to manufacture and to distribute. That's not to say that Nike and Adidas don't want people to wear their shoes for triathlons. It does seem like less athletes are using them. Why is that? ASICs seem to have focused in on this area. It's one that perhaps the two bigger brands haven't really cemented their authority perhaps. Does seem like there's some space there for some of the other brands to nip in and get some of the limelight. ASICs do seem to have quite a hold over the triathlon podium finishes. I wonder whether that will continue to be the case as we move into 2023. You see Nike and Adidas sign up big name athletes, don't you? Just in Nike's stable, you've got Ronaldo, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Robert Lewandowski. Big name stars that are known outside of their sport as well. But sadly, the incredible achievements of some of these triathletes seem to fly a bit under the radar. They don't seem to garner the same focus as some of those other bigger, more well-known sports. Checking the rules out, the triathlon governing body admits that it does not adhere to the World Athletics rules on the 14mm height for road running. They do not check the shoes of the athletes that are taking part. I don't see any reason why we should have a problem with some poor soul who's just swam 2.4 miles, then cycled 112 miles, and then has to run the marathon distance, wanting to put on a nice dry super shoe that's, you know, above 40 millimeters to help them out a bit. I mean, come on, just make things a bit more manageable, isn't it? I can't even imagine swimming 2.4 miles. I'm not sure I would be good for anything after that. Will we see triathletes utilizing the Prime X now that this sort of barrier has been, well, not broken, just surpassed? I'd suggest it's almost inevitable that we'll see people using that Adizero model at some point in the near future. The inclusion of that light strike foam, the energy rods and those blades in the mid to forefoot is bound to give a little push. It's clearly gonna be helpful to people doing the marathon distance after those other disciplines. At this point, I doff my cap to anybody that is capable of doing a triathlon, half Ironman even, even just where they do two events. You're amazing. It's completely outside of my sphere of understanding how anyone can do it. And I think you're really cool. So I can only see more and more people using those higher stack shoes now if they're entering into some of those events. What do you think, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time. Today it comes from the fantastic Max Bygraves, his track Crazy Music. Now, I've been trying to turn this track into a, like a rockabilly rock and roll version. I just think it's fantastic. It evokes feelings of old days with fewer troubles, I suppose, fewer things to worry about. Certainly no internet. Not sure even people had phones when they liked this track. Crazy Music's fantastic though. It's got some beautiful brass arrangements in there and I like the crooned vocal style as well. You can imagine loads of people dancing around in a dance hall to this one and having a whale of a time. I'm sure like gin or something might be involved. There would be a load of oafs drinking lager and eating kebabs. Because that's just not something that I ever want to see. I think over here in the UK, Max Bygraves is kind of a bit forgotten now, I suppose, with the youngsters. They won't have a clue who I'm on about. But do go and check him out. Absolutely fantastic vocal delivery. It's sort of power and Almost beautiful naivety to some of it. And the production quality on some of the tracks is absolutely stellar. Go and check Crazy Music out. You will not be disappointed. It's certainly not Motorhead, but who wants to listen to the same music every day? Not me. Thanks for tuning in, people. It is always appreciated. If you've got a particular question about any of the shoes I've reviewed recently or any of the videos, please hit me up with a super thanks down below and get that question straight to the mind of Ed Bud. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.